Mm. A weird white spot on a banana is a sure sign you probably want to throw them away, as these are the nests of spiders. I'm talking about the Brazilian wandering spider, as it has no GPS. And this guy is dangerous, also known as the world's most venomous spider. One bite, and your nervous system is instantly blocked. As a nasty bonus, you get nausea and blurred vision. Don't worry, they're most likely to be found in South America. But since they like to hide, they can sneak into the banana box and travel wherever the bananas travel. They like to travel in their sack, and there is evidence of a mama spider traveling together with her baby spiders. Oh, goody. Ever eaten canned food? Chances are, you've hoovered up some maggots, too. Those critters can be found in all types of food. Canned tomatoes? Sure thing. Canned mushrooms? Absolutely. Maggots are crazy about those. They love it so much that 20 maggots are good to go for 3.5 ounces of drained mushrooms. Sorry, pal. There's nothing we can do. Just accept it. Some creepy things in your food may actually be approved by the FDA. As weird as it may sound, the FDA is okay with 30 or more insect parts per chocolate bar. Want to know more? Okay, how about rodent hair in your peanut butter? Mmm, yummy! Despite the fact that peanut butter is one of the best controlled by FDA products out there, they don't see anything bad in a couple of rodent hairs per jar. Now, let's check your intuition. Question 1. How much mold is acceptable in apple butter, according to the FDA? Mm, Not that much, actually. 12% mold is acceptable. Question 2. How much mold is okay for cherry jam? Eh, Things are getting stinkier, as 30% mold is okay for cherry jam. The last one? What about black currant jam? Ready? 75% moldy black currant jam is FDA approved. I don't think I'm going to eat peanut butter with black currant jam ever again. Broccoli is both good for health and risky at the same time. It's not that you shouldn't touch broccoli, but it's a rather friendly reminder to check your veggies. What if there might be a dangerous insect lurking inside your broccoli? Let's say the black widow spider. Their bite is not as bad as the Brazilian wandering spider's bite, but it's still not good. It's a true story. A guy from Ohio did find such a spider in broccoli. Luckily, the story has a happy ending. The person who found it called the local animal sanctuary, and the Ohio Another Chance Sanctuary adopted the spider and gave it a really cute name. (laughs) Broccoli. Hey, wait a minute. We're adopting spiders now? Ho ho ho! Christmas is soon, and you up for a live Christmas tree. Before dragging that tree right to your place, you better inspect it thoroughly. See that walnut-sized, pinecone-shaped object hanging on your tree? Bad news! This is someone's dormitory. It's an egg sack holding hundreds of little mantises waiting to hatch in your home and celebrate the holidays together. So, unless you want to share your bed with them, make sure all the surprises are under the Christmas tree, not on it. Right, you don't want to risk and opt for the fake Christmas tree. Good choice! Thing is, fake trees are three times less likely to catch fire than live ones. But it doesn't mean it's totally safe. You have to be careful either way. Use appropriate lighting and never place the fake tree too close to the heat source. Flame-resistant models are the best. Alright, nearsighted people, beware! If you ever see something that looks either like an Oreo cookie or an ancient coin with a quaint design, you better put on your glasses before touching it. You know, this might be a terrifying spider. What, again? Yeah. I'm talking about the Chinese hourglass spider. And I honestly have no idea why they call it the hourglass spider, and not the cookie spider. These guys live in Southeast Asia, Mexico, and Guatemala. And it seems like it doesn't really care that much about cold, since it can even chill in some parts of the United States and Canada. These spiders are notorious for setting up traps. They build burrows, and once they detect motion, bam, they pounce. Also, those burrows help them keep unwanted visitors, such as wasps, at bay. Good news? We humans are way too large for them to drag us into their dungeons. And despite many viral posts, they're not poisonous to us. Phew. What time is it? 
Ah, it's time to debunk another myth. Now, some time ago, there was a viral TikTok video with strawberries soaked in salt water. The video looked pretty gross because of worm-like bugs crawling from the strawberry. But this one is sort of a myth that all the strawberries are swarming with larvae. First off, they all get checked and soaked before shipping. Moreover, there are fruit flies, which are quite different. Thing is, if the berries wait on the counter to be bought for too long, they start attracting fruit flies, which lay teeny tiny eggs, which then turn into larvae, which then turn into new fruit flies. The key point here is that these fruit flies are everywhere. Supermarkets, smaller stores, and even in your kitchen. And yeah, you're pretty much likely to eat them each time you munch on pretty much any berries. You say gross, I say natural protein. Eh, just kidding. Don't worry, plant larvae aren't dangerous for people. Also, you don't need to soak your berries in salt water. A thorough rinse will do. Now, it's best to avoid some fruits if they're underripe. Lychee is a good example here. Despite their innocent appearance, they can be pretty dangerous. If you eat them before they're ripe, you're likely to consume some toxins too. It's not as bad as you can imagine, but this toxin can significantly lower your blood sugar. For people with certain conditions, it may lead to unwanted consequences, including fever and even worse. So, nothing extraordinary here, just make sure your lychees are ripe. Now you might think that black sooty spots on your apple are a true sign the fruit isn't edible, but it's not quite true. First off, those sooty spots are nothing but a cosmetic issue, even though it's a fungus. But don't worry, it's not dangerous or something. Option 1. Scrub those spots off and munch on your apple. Option 2. Peel the apple and munch on it. Option 3, where you throw the apple away, doesn't exist. Now, beware if the salmon you're about to buy has caviar. It might be a sign this fish is not going to be as yummy as you want. Salmon from the Pacific Ocean tend to lay eggs in freshwater, so they have to migrate when they do that. But once the salmon is in freshwater, all its systems kind of stop working and the fish stops eating. Such salmon is still edible, but the quality is way poorer than it could be. And what if you see a white capsule on your kale, which is supposedly a cocoon? Hey, no need to throw your dinner away. You can simply remove this aspiring butterfly, or fly, give that kale a fine rinse, and enjoy your salad. Oh, almost forgot? Be careful with pre-packaged salads. Even though the manufacturers claim they're safe to eat without washing, there is evidence of people getting health conditions because of unwashed pre-packaged salads. Those salads landed them with hefty medicine bills to get rid of the consequences. Imagine you suddenly notice a fly in your drink. Is it doing the backstroke? Will you finish the glass or pour another one? Well, it depends on the gender of the fly. If you've got a female fly in your drink, a couple of minutes later, the taste will get funky. If a male fly wants to take a bath in your glass, it won't ruin the drink. Thing is, the female flies have certain pheromones that are in charge of that funky smell. Even if you fish the fly out instantly, the drink can still lose its original taste, as even one nanogram of pheromone is enough. But since you probably won't be able to tell the fly's gender, you probably want to pour a new glass. Yeah, a fly in your stomach won't do anything bad to you, but it's sort of gross. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Burglaries are on the rise in your neighborhood, and you have concerns about whether your house might be vulnerable. You have no surveillance system, so tonight you're placing some foil over the front door handle before you go to bed. This will help identify if someone sneakily tries to enter while you sleep. You wake up the next morning, and it appears the foil is slightly ripped. Someone has been here, and they're sure to return. Another option is to put a mug on the doorknob. When the knob turns, the mug will fall, causing a noise to wake you up and hopefully deter the intruder. Your main concern is that a tradesman stopped by recently. He said that he was working next door and asked to use your toilet. You refused, 
and felt bad at the time for being rude, but it was a very smart move. About 60% of burglaries in the USA are made by someone you know or have met before. That tradesman, while going to the bathroom, could have adjusted something in your house to make their return entry a little easier. They may have wanted to take a closer look at what security system is installed, check the structural integrity of your home, and found out what valuable loot you might have. Finally, today you're going on vacation. You need to prepare your house and make it as safe as possible. A full post box is the first thing a robber will look for in a target. Your neighbor will need to take your mail while you're away. A well-manicured property is a clear sign that you are always there. You've always kept your lawn mown and hedges trimmed, so you will need to arrange for someone to do this while you're away. If it was winter, any untouched snow around your house would also make it a target. Having a neighbor make pretend footprints that show recent activity will also provide a deterrent. There are many types of hedges that act as a great first defense. Luckily, you have sharp-leaved shrubs along your fences. If someone jumps into your property and lands on a sharp or spiky bush, they will immediately cry out in discomfort. This will alert your neighbors of an intruder. And the foliage will also catch fragments of clothing that could be used as evidence later. In preparation for your trip the week before, you opened and closed your curtains at random times throughout the day. You made sure there were no clear patterns, so it won't matter if they're left open while you're away, just in case someone was scouting your property. Burglars spend several days walking or driving through neighborhoods, identifying the behaviors of each house. One thing they don't really like is a neighborhood watch. Criminals do their research before they start scouting and will avoid these areas. Something for you to organize when you get back. Now, move all your expensive electronics away from the windows so there's nothing of value in clear view. Put them inside a cupboard or a concealed room. Don't worry about TVs. They're too large and take effort to move. The criminals are more interested in the smaller devices, like an iPad and gaming devices. Put your small expensive items, like jewelry, in boxes and hide them away in a secret location. Surprisingly, a kid's room is a good spot. Burglars have admitted to never going into them, as there's nothing of value in toys. Take photos of all the serial numbers on your electronic devices and create an inventory for insurance purposes. 95% of break-ins are done by force, so it's time to reinforce your windows and doors. You can make it even more difficult for the crooks. Remove all stools, chairs, and ladders in the backyard and put them into your garage. Otherwise, they will help provide easier access points to higher entrances, like the air conditioner box. This is one of their favorites. Without a way to reinforce it, it's easy to tear off and creates an entrance. Don't make it easier for them with a step up. Burglars can break down a weak door within one minute. Install a metal frame instead of wood for more support. The hinges and lock should have adequate strength to withstand being kicked long enough until they give up. With the lock as the remaining weak spot, this can easily be picked by an experienced thief. A simple protection lock that holds it in place will make sure it won't budge. The hinges on your garage door swing outwards, which makes it vulnerable and can be accessed by taking the pins out of the hinges. Replace them with tamper-proof pins, so they can't be removed. And lastly, the garage overhead door is one of the first places a burglar looks to access. They don't have a lock that fully secures them. Attach a padlock on the latch connecting it to the track, holding it in place. Your garage door doesn't have this option, so drill a hole in the track just above one of the rollers and attach a padlock. Robbers are scared of dogs, the territorial and loyal guardians of the house. A survey found that most houses burgled didn't have dogs because thieves don't want to draw attention during a heist. 
Unfortunately, you don't own one. But just placing a dog bowl outside the front door will discourage them. The burglars have adapted their craft with technology. Four out of five criminals use social media, like Facebook, Twitter, and Google Maps to find their targets. Even sharing a photo with a house key in it is enough for a burglar to create their own key by zooming in and taking the exact measurements. Make sure your wireless network is secure and use a new, much stronger password while away. You're not only vulnerable to physical objects being stolen. Valuable data like passwords and access codes can be taken through your network. And there's also the threat of infecting devices through malicious malware. You can also remove the vision of your house completely from Google Maps. Type in your home address, find the street view of your residence, press the Options button, and select Report a Problem. You'll be taken to a screen with an image of your home, with the option to move a red square to cover your property. Request it to be blurred under the option My Home and enter your exact address. It will only take a couple of days to be processed. Don't leave the radio on while away. It won't help. Through the burglar's method of scouting houses, they take note of radio and TV sounds. When they return, they check if they're still on, which just makes it easier to confirm that no one's home. An alternative option to show active presence at home is by making your own audio, something that plays ambient noises randomly throughout the day, with footsteps, conversations, and a dog barking. Leaving your lights on is also not a good idea. Someone spying will notice your house easier, especially at night, and you'll be further robbed on your electricity bill. You're just about ready to leave on your vacation, and need to take the trash out. If you have some large boxes, break them down so they can fit inside the bin. Hide any clues about what valuables you recently received. Last check, all the doors are locked and no windows are left open. Now you can finally enjoy your trip. But as you enjoy yourself in your picturesque location, leave any snaps on your phone while you're over there and post them online only when you return. If you do share your photos while you're away, it will have made all your preparations pointless. Every criminal in the area will know you're not home. But with 2.5 million houses burgled annually in the USA, a house without a modern security system is 300% more likely to be broken into. When you get back from your break, it will be a great idea to install one. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Now, I hate to break it to you, but there's no such thing as a baby carrot. The cute little carrots they sell at supermarkets are actually regular carrots that have been shaved down to this baby size. You would think strawberry-flavored gummy bears should be red or pink, right? Well, sorry to say, but they're green. Brown rice and white rice are the same product. The white variety starts off as the brown one, but then some parts of it are removed by milling, which gives the rice its white color. This allows it to be stored for longer, but at the same time reduces the rice's nutritional value. Now, on the topic of rice, it was used to build the Great Wall of China. The builders mixed sticky rice soup with lime and got rice mortar for construction. It was stronger and had better water resistance than regular lime mortar. Thanks to the rice soup, the Great Wall has been able to stand for centuries despite the elements. You found a long-forgotten chocolate bar somewhere deep in your desk. Yum! Nice surprise! But when you open it, you hesitate. There's some unpleasant-looking kind of dusty film on it. Don't worry, though, it's still safe to eat. It's just that the fat or cocoa butter used to make the chocolate has been separated from the rest of the bar because of the heat. As it cooled back down, it created this whitish film. The taste might be a little off, however, so it may be best to use it for cooking instead. And you'd have more self-control than I do. Avocados can't ripen while on the tree. If not picked, 
they will simply fall from the branch while still not ripe. When picked, though, they will become soft and flavorful just like we love them. This happens because of the burst of ethylene produced by the fruit itself after picking. It's inhibited while the avocado is still on the tree. Tomatoes bought at supermarkets often have a weak flavor. It has to do with how they're grown and stored afterwards. Tomatoes are gathered when not fully ripe yet, and they ripen in the transportation containers and on the store shelves. But if they're stored at temperatures below 40 degrees Fahrenheit while not fully ripe, they lose a lot of their flavor. So to keep them tasty, it's best to store tomatoes outside the fridge. Honey is probably the only food that can literally never go bad. If it's properly sealed with no air left in, it can go for millennia and still be edible. The oldest pot of honey ever found was 5,500 years old, next to the mummy of Winnie the Pooh. Nah, not really. While dark and milk chocolate raise no questions, their white sibling isn't chocolate at all. It doesn't contain any cocoa powder, which makes chocolate, well, chocolate. The white variety is made of cocoa butter mixed with sugar and flavor, usually vanilla. Peanuts are closer relatives to peas than to nuts. They're legumes, the type of plants that includes peas, chickpeas, and beans. Cashew nuts aren't nuts either. They're seeds that are collected from pretty large fruits. The same can be said about walnuts, almonds, pecans, and pistachios. When you buy some sushi rolls with crab meat, what you get is no crab at all. The red and white stuff is what is called imitation crab, and it's basically paste made of fish. Its other name is surimi. By the way, sushi was originally a way to preserve fish. It was stored in fermented rice, which could keep fish fresh for up to a year. And after that, the rice was thrown away while the fish was cooked and eaten. If you get all tearful while cutting onions, there are several ways to avoid that. One is put the onion in the freezer before cutting it. That will freeze the molecules of the chemical that makes you cry. Another method is washing the onion in cool water just before cutting it. The cold and moisture left on the onion will not allow the tearful chemical to get in your eyes. And the third way is to put a wet paper towel next to your cutting board. The chemical gets attracted to the nearest water source, which is usually your eyes. But in this case, it'll be the towel. Now, the vast majority of wasabi we eat isn't actual wasabi. The real thing is very expensive. So what we get is just a mixture of horseradish, mustard, and green food coloring. Be careful when you eat fresh pineapple because it can literally eat you back. It contains an enzyme that digests protein. That burning sensation you get when you've eaten a bit too much pineapple? That's it. Mac and cheese used to be a really fancy dish back in the 18th century US. Pasta could only be imported from Italy, which made it expensive, and the process of making cheese was time and effort consuming. It didn't make the product cheaper either. Only the wealthiest could afford a plate of mac and cheese, and it was served in the fanciest restaurants as a delicacy. Oysters, lobsters, and pretty much any other seafood, on the other hand, were considered food for the poor back in the day. Seaside communities fed themselves with what they could catch in the sea, and that included mussels, crabs, and a lot of other stuff we consider delicacies today. Wow, I think if I ate mac and cheese with lobster right now, my head would explode. Back to rich food. In medieval times, fish was considered a gift fit for a king. English monarchs were known to be presented with huge pikes. And even before that, in the Roman Empire, fish such as red mullet was a delicacy that emperors paid for with large amounts of gold. Farmed salmon fresh is naturally gray. Wild fish eat a lot of shrimp, which makes their meat that trademark pink-orange color. The farm kind is fed with a special plant pigment for the same effect. The inventor of petroleum jelly, Sir Robert Cheesebro, claimed to eat a spoonful of Vaseline every single day. He also asked his nurse to cover him head to toe in the stuff when he fell seriously ill. He soon recovered and lived to be 96 years of age. All the while, he firmly believed in petroleum jelly's miraculous properties. It was a slick product. Oranges actually gave their name to the color we now know as orange. In Old English, this color was called roughly yellow-red. Only when the fruit became widespread across Europe, the word that signified their color appeared. If you want to take a closer look at a beehive, make sure you don't have any bananas on you. 
The femorone that alarms bees to rise and protect their home smells like bananas, so you're likely to become their enemy number one if you get too close. Milk was once proved as a material for plastic. It was biodegradable and non-soluble in water and virtually didn't burn. But it was later outperformed by oil-based plastic because the milk-based variety couldn't be molded and became brittle over time. Also, the oil-based kind was a lot cheaper in production. Pound cake got its name for the mass of its ingredients. It was originally made from a pound of butter, a pound of eggs, and, you guessed it, a pound of sugar. So it should be three-pound cake. The most expensive pizza you can ever get costs around $12,000. It can only be cooked by three chefs in your home, and it takes three full days to make. Um, do the chefs have to stay in your home? In ancient Egypt, laborers were paid with food. They got radishes, onions, and garlic as part of their wages. These plants were known for their antibacterial properties even then, which made them pretty valuable. Although the most widespread color of cauliflower is white, it also comes in green, orange, and purple varieties. They're more difficult to cultivate than the white one, but aren't much different from it otherwise. As for the overall number of varieties of cauliflower, there are several hundreds of them. To easily test the freshness of eggs, put them in a bowl of water. A fresh egg will quickly go down to the bottom, while a rotten one will float. Hey, last one to the bottom is a rotten egg! That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Why is the myth dogs are colorblind so widely accepted? They do see colors, even though they have a more limited spectrum than we do. They see blue, yellow, and violet pretty well, but it's hard for them to tell the difference between orange, red, and green. So, if you want to redecorate your dog's house, maybe you should stick to purple and blue shades. Animals, plants, and humans were all actually connected and have common traits because we've all evolved from the same micro-ancestor. This would be our planet's original ancestor, Luca. This stands for the last universal common ancestor, which is a 3.8 billion year old organism. Closing the eyes can improve your memory. Let's say you want to listen to a story and see how much you can remember. Studies show that if you close your eyes and take a 15-minute rest, you'll remember it better. A good technique for when you're studying or trying to remember some boring information. The pink corner of your eye is actually the remnant of the third eyelid. We all have this mysterious membrane. The third eyelid is way more prominent in certain mammals and birds since it protects their eyes from dust. But for humans, this tissue doesn't have any particular meaning, so scientists believe we'll eventually lose it. When potatoes are exposed to too much light, they mostly turn green, whether they're in a factory, storage, or a field. This happens because they start to form chlorophyll, a pigment that gives plants green color. So when you see green potato chips, it means they were made from one of these potatoes that were exposed to light for a longer time. But just because some green potato chips made it into the bag doesn't mean you should eat them. As it turns out, the green areas on potatoes and on chips are not good for you. Nothing's going to happen if you eat one or two of these green potato chips. But if you eat too much of a green potato, you might experience some discomfort. Despite their name, some oranges are not orange. Some initially contain large amounts of chlorophyll, which makes this citrus green-colored in the first place. As it matures and ripens, the chlorophyll slowly disappears as the fruit is exposed to cool temperatures. That's when it gets its color. But this is also why, in warm areas across the world, oranges remain green. If you've ordered something small from Amazon, like a pen, a single book, or something else, you might have got it in a box that seemed way too big for your item. And it's not an accident, nor random. It's because of their complex shipping algorithm. It takes into account the size of other packages going to the same place, as well as the size of the shipping vehicle. The small item gets a box size that will fit the space inside the vehicle together with other packages and keep boxes from sliding around. Physicist and inventor Percy Spencer discovered microwaves by accident. 
He was building a magnetron for some of his radar equipment. At one moment, he realized the chocolate bar he had been keeping in his pocket had begun to melt. He was curious about what was going to happen next, so he directed microwaves at eggs, which exploded, and popcorn, which popped. This is how he discovered a great tool to heat food that uses less energy than a conventional oven. In its original version, the clay-like substance we call Play-Doh today was a wallpaper cleaner. It was invented and sold for the purpose of lifting soot off of wallpaper. At the time it first showed on the market, you could only get it in an off-white color. But later, they started selling it as a toy. The substance was produced in yellow, blue, and red. Today, you can get it in more than 50 colors. Bubble wrap had a somewhat different purpose at its beginning. It was supposed to be wallpaper. In the 1950s, when it first showed up, two engineers decided to glue two shower curtains together. That's how they trapped small bubbles of air between them. They were trying to create some sort of textured wallpaper, but it didn't take off. A couple years later, IBM had to ship some data processors and needed something to protect them, which is when the phenomenon of bubble wrap came up. One study showed that one minute of popping bubble wrap is as calming as a 30-minute massage. Why don't electric fans cool the air? You could set a thermometer in front of it and choose a turbo mode, but the temperature won't go down. In fact, the temperature might even go up if you leave the thermometer next to the working parts thanks to the electric current. A fan won't cool the air, but it will cool you or any other object with water inside. An electric fan improves air circulation in a closed space, plus it speeds up evaporation, which makes liquids, including the sweat on your skin, a bit cooler. Have you noticed pen caps have tiny holes on the top? It seems random at first, but it's actually a lifesaver. If you can accidentally swallow this cap, the hole ensures you can continue breathing because the cap won't completely block the airway. If you take a closer look at the night sky, you'll see stars come in different shapes and sizes. White is the most prevalent color, true, but they sparkle in shades of red, blue, and yellow too. But you won't see a green star. It's not that stars don't emit green light, it's just that our eyes don't see it like that. Stars vary in colors when they burn at different temperatures. The hottest stars appear blue, while the coolest stars seem to burn in red hues, but they all shine in multiple colors. They emit different light wavelengths that represent various parts of the color spectrum. We can't all perceive those wavelengths separately. We only see the dominant light wavelength, which means the dominant color. So, stars of medium heat emit green photons in most cases, but they just don't appear green. When we try to process something that generates red, green, blue, and yellow photons at once, our eyes see it as white. That's the same reason why mid-temperature stars such as our sun appear white to us. Why do we blink? To moisten and cleanse the eye, that's for sure. Every time you close your eyelids, the tear glands secrete a salty substance that sweeps over the surface of your eye. It then flushes away all those tiny dust particles and also lubricates the exposed parts of your eyeball. We usually blink every 4 to 6 seconds unless the eyes are more irritated. Then, we blink more frequently to keep them moist and clean. But not just that. Blinking also helps our brain to reset. It has to process so many things all the time, so it's fair to give it a break from time to time. So blinking rescues our brain around 15 to 20 times per minute. When we shut our eyes, we help our brain to power down and take a very short but still effective mental break. That's why we blink more when we're in the middle of a task that demands some serious mental activity. Why do we have nails? They're generally made of a specific type of protein you can find in fur, hair, claws, and hooves. It's called keratin, and unlike claws, nails are flat and wide, so they're more effective at shielding the tips of toes and fingers from potential injuries. Fingernails not only protect sensitive areas, but also provide a rigid backing, so you can take and separate small objects more easily. How would you pick up a single jigsaw piece or peel a sticker from its backing without nails? It would be almost impossible without additional tools. Apes and monkeys use their feet for such delicate tasks too. Primates have probably evolved nails because they needed help with simple tasks, 
such as grasping branches tightly and removing ticks. Raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, and cherries are not berries. To classify a berry, they have to have three layers, a protective outer one, a fleshy one in the middle, and finally, an inner part where you can find the seeds. Also, a plant must come from a flower with just one ovary and have two or more seeds. So, by this criteria, cranberries and blueberries are berries. Together with some more plants you wouldn't expect to be in this category, kiwis, bananas, watermelons, tomatoes, eggplants, and even peppers. You've probably heard your ears and nose are those body parts that never stop growing. This happens because the effects of skin changes and gravity. Other parts of your body change in the same ways, but you can't see it as well as you can see what's happening with your nose and ears. The giant shark that terrorized the oceans some 20 million years ago. For 13 million years, this 60-ton beast dominated the warm waters of our planet. Though, some believe that the Meg still lives in the most remote and deepest parts of the ocean. It's a hot summer day. It seems only logical to go for a swim in the sea. You're floating on your back, completely relaxed. Your eyes are closed. Your breath is even. Water's pleasantly cool around your body. A light breeze touches your face. You feel calm enough to doze off. Suddenly, something bumps into your leg. Yanked out of your half-slumber, you begin to flail until you're face-to-face -face with the invisible danger. Luckily, all you spot is a couple of easily recognizable fins and cute smiley snouts. Phew, just dolphins. Guess you're lucky to meet them in the wild. These amazing creatures are so close, you can touch them. You've heard people say dolphins' skin feels rubbery, but to your mind, it's more like the inner part of a hard-boiled egg. One of the animals is so close to you that its salty smell fills your nostrils. You know, though, that dolphins don't have sweat glands. It means they don't sweat and are pretty much odorless. The smell you sense comes from the water they swim in. The largest and most ferocious predator to ever haunt the oceans, the megalodon shark dominated the seas for centuries before coming extinct millions of years ago. However, scientists managed to discover very few remnants of the giant shark. Everything we know about the great beast we've learned thanks to fossils of its giant teeth which are just about the size of the average human hand. A megalodon skeleton has never been discovered. Shark skeletons are made mostly of cartilage, meaning that they decompose quickly. Luckily, sharks continuously shed and regrow teeth throughout their lives. One shark can go through 40,000 teeth in a single lifetime. Scientists have managed to study different types of shark species based on their teeth alone. The megalodon shark had around 276 teeth. When they fell out, those teeth landed in the seabed where they stayed for millions of years, fossilizing. Scientists found those teeth, and they're the only real record we have of the megalodon's existence. Megalodon teeth have been discovered all over the world. It means that unlike other marine animals of its time, the megalodon was intercontinental. Even today, most sharks and marine animals tend to stick to one sea or ocean. The megalodon shark swam freely around the world, moving between tropical and subtropical waters. Megalodon teeth have been found in every continent apart from the freezing cold waters of Antarctica. When a megalodon makes a starring appearance in a movie or TV show, it's portrayed to look like a giant version of a great white shark. Scientists previously believed that the megalodon and the great white shark both descended from one common ancestor. Still, it's not true. In fact, it's more likely that the megalodon was the arch enemy of the great white shark's ancestor, the broad-toothed mako shark. That means megalodon wouldn't have looked so similar to the great white after all. In reality, the megalodon would have a shorter nose than the great white along with longer pectoral fins to give the giant shark a stockier and more threatening build. They both had an excellent sense of smell though, so even in prehistoric times, it wasn't a good idea to go swimming with a chunk of raw meat in hand. And it certainly isn't safe now. Whether the Meg's hiding somewhere in the depths, which some still believe is true, or it's gone forever, younger cousins will still be there waiting. Also, both of them like to go after big marine mammals, so they would certainly have things to do together. That is, until the Meg got moody and accidentally ate its friend. Eh, you never know. These guys had a different hunting style. Great whites prefer to dive straight towards their prey and find its softest spot, 
like exposed legs or underbelly. Sometimes, an entire tooth would be found embedded in a bone of some bigger animal, such as a whale. Without the main parts they used for swimming, poor sea animals were then helpless and unable to escape. Yet whales were just a smaller part of Megalodon's diet. Seals, sea cows, squids, dolphins, other sharks… The good old Meg probably wouldn't say no to some random school of smaller fish swimming into its mouth either. Nothing better than a good snack after a big tasty dinner. Even those giant turtles weren't safe with their thick shells. The Meg probably took them as a dare challenge on a daily basis. Scientists have used computer simulations to try and work out the hunting style of the ancient shark. Using this technology, scientists have discovered that the Megalodon's attack style was very different from that of modern-day sharks. Modern sharks dive straight for their prey's most vulnerable spot, for example, the soft underbelly of a seal. The Megalodon's teeth were uniquely suited to biting through tougher areas of cartilage. So, evidence suggests that a Megalodon would first chew the tougher fins of their prey, rendering them unable to swim away before launching into their final attack. Some people believe that the Megalodon is still alive today, lurking at the depths of the ocean's waters. But it's unlikely to be true. Megalodons are a warm water species, which means they would be unable to survive in the cold waters of the deep ocean. Most of the Megalodon's potential prey live in shallower waters, meaning there would be very little for the Megalodon to eat at deep sea level. Simply put, if there was an animal as big as the Megalodon still living today, we would have spotted it by now. It is unlikely that you'll run into a Meg, though. The sharks, like us, preferred warm coastal waters. Deep ocean living would be too cold for the beasts, and food would be scarce. Their entire bodies would also have to evolve to avoid being squished by the enormous water pressure down there. It's unlikely they're still around, but not impossible. Some good news if you do run into one is that the shark is pretty unlikely to eat you. You are way too small a meal for the Megalodon, even if you have a couple of friends with you. This guy eats whales that are over 50 feet long. If you're having a beach party, though, it's a different story. In a beach full of swimmers, the shark very well might creep up, scooping several humans into its giant mouth without even chewing. The fearsome name Megalodon comes from two Greek words, megas, meaning big, and odont, meaning tooth. Combined, they mean big tooth, and it certainly lives up to its name. Just one of its chompers is the same size as a human head. It had 276 humongous teeth in total, across five terrifying rows. In all of history, only a couple of saber-toothed cats and the T-Rex had consistently bigger teeth. Now that's a showdown I'd like to watch. The Megalodon vanished millions of years ago, leaving only huge teeth to be found by modern archaeologists. They literally disappeared with very few traces left. Scientists believe that over time, deep sea levels dropped and the ocean's temperature went down rapidly. Over a third of all marine life was wiped out as the oceans cooled and the number of animals at the bottom of the food chain plummeted. This had a catastrophic effect on the hungry predators at the top. Sorry guys. It became way too cold for these sun-loving sharks too, which made it difficult for them to reproduce since they gave birth in warm waters. The Megalodon is usually described as a sort of great white shark, but this is just a common myth. In fact, the ancestors of today's great white existed at the same time as the Meg, but they weren't best buddies and were even in competition with each other. The great white shark was a better hunter using its smaller size and agility to snap up the Meg's prey quickly. They were also known to eat Meg pups, who were only half their size. This didn't exactly help the whole extinction thing. While a great white was no match for an adult Meg in a head-to-head -head fight, they sure weren't scared of stealing their food. This only left the bigger fish and whales for the Meg, but its food supplies began to run out as whales swam to the cooler new seas. The whales adapted to prefer the colder temperatures, leaving our friend the Meg behind. The Megalodons either starved or were frozen into extinction by the Ice Age. Rather than a great white, the Megalodon is more like a modern bull shark. It had a short snout, a flat lower jaw, and huge pectoral fins to support its massive weight and size. As scary as they are, these sharks were actually caring family guys. Several megalodon nursery areas have been discovered in Florida, Maryland, and Panama. They gave birth to their young in shallow water environments. We know this from discovering loads of tiny megalodon teeth found in these areas. 
I wonder if they had nannies too. The Empire State Building's tower was designed to serve as a docking station for dirigibles. At that time, people believed that these airships would become the main means of transportation in the future. The project included gangplanks, check-in and customs offices, and so on. But then the engineers realized that the wind up there was too strong for their plans, and they gave up on their idea. Angel Falls, the largest uninterrupted waterfall on the planet, is more than twice as tall as the Empire State Building. During the dry season, the falling water sometimes evaporates before it reaches the ground. One of the most mysterious sounds ever heard on Earth was the bloop. It occurred in 1997 and resembled the noise of marine animals. But the volume was too great for a sound produced by a living creature. The bloop continued for one minute. It started from a low rumble and then rose in frequency. Antarctica might just look like a giant field of ice, but there's actually a huge continent underneath. That means that it has volcanoes, mountains, and valleys, like any other continent. Scientists have recently discovered that the Antarctic landmass has the lowest point on the planet, as well as huge mountain ranges. If any of the numerous volcanoes were to erupt, it would melt a huge part of the surface ice and increase the spill of ice into the ocean. The sea level would rise and flood coastal areas around the world. The ocean waters would also be disrupted, putting marine life at risk, though all of these volcanoes are dormant at the moment. Each day on the South Pole lasts six months on this continent. The South Pole only has a single sunset and sunrise across an entire year. Early Earth might have been purple, not green. There's a theory that ancient microbes used molecules rather than chlorophyll to absorb sunlight. These molecules likely gave living organisms a violet tint. During the Stone Age, the entire population of Central Europe was around 1,500 people, which means they would all fit on a mid-sized cruise liner these days. Astronomers have figured out that the Milky Way weighs around 1.5 trillion solar masses, and one solar mass is the mass of our Sun. A tiny part of this weight is a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy and 200 billion stars. The rest is dark matter, mysterious and invisible. If all sheets of Arctic ice and glaciers melted at the same time, the sea level would rise for the height of a 26-story building. Under black or UV light, ripening bananas look bright blue. That's because of the chlorophyll that's breaking down when the fruit is ripening. Because of tectonic plate movements, the Pacific Ocean shrinks every year, and the Atlantic Ocean gets bigger by the same amount. These days, there are only two ice sheets in the world left after the planet's last ice age. The first is the Greenland Ice Sheet. The second, the Antarctic Ice Sheet, is enormous. It's the size of Mexico and the continental U.S. combined. Tsunami waves often go unnoticed. They don't rise for more than several inches above the surface until they reach shallow waters. When the ocean is deep, though, they can travel as fast as a long-distance passenger airplane. Corals that live in shallow waters produce their own protection from the sun. Without it, sunlight would harm the algae living inside them. To protect these algae, which are the main source of food for the corals, they fluoresce. This process makes proteins that act as sunscreen. Almost 90% of the volcanic activity on Earth happens in the oceans. The South Pacific has the largest concentration of volcanoes people know about. There's one volcano cluster that has 1,133 volcanic cones. All of them are active and cooped up in an area the size of New York State. The Zemchug Canyon in the middle of the Bering Sea is the largest underwater canyon ever discovered. There are more treasures and artifacts at the bottom of the ocean than in all museums in the world combined. In 1900, one of the biggest hurricanes struck near Central America and in the Gulf of Mexico. It then went as far as Florida and Texas and is considered to be the most devastating hurricane in the United States history. They first detected it on August 27th and it lasted for many days. By the time it reached the Texas coast, the storm had turned into a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricanes are categorized on wind speed and intensity using something called a Saffir-Simpson scale. 
there are five different categories from one to five, with one being the weakest and five being the strongest. The people of Galveston had less than four days to prepare for the arriving storm that even stretched out to Oklahoma and Kansas. The Great Hurricane then made its way to the Great Plains and turned towards the Great Lakes, New England, and reached southeastern Canada. The storm was so bad that more than 3,600 homes were damaged even though they were sturdy enough to withstand the storm. Given the population numbers back then, it was equivalent to hundreds of thousands of houses destroyed, if not millions. Spotted Lake, Canada. They call it the most magical spot in Canada. In winter and spring, this is just a regular lake that looks like any other. But try going there in the summer when the water starts to evaporate. It'll feel as if you've entered a different world, a polka-dotted landscape with blue, green, and yellow spots. Over the summer, there are over 300 pools there, and they all look magical. Over the centuries, people believed each of them had different healing properties. Oh, and the explanation for the vibrant colors is pure science. Each of them has a high concentration of different minerals. We live inside the sun. Its atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface, and even though Earth is 93 million miles away from the star, it's still within reach of the sun's atmosphere. Auroras happen when charged particles from the sun get caught by Earth's magnetic field and crash into the upper atmosphere near the poles. Our planet is gradually slowing down the speed of its rotation. It happens at an unhurried pace of 17 milliseconds per 100 years. Because of this, our days are becoming longer, and still, only after 140 million years, a day on Earth will last 25 hours. Earth's southernmost continent, Antarctica, is the only the fifth largest one, but it contains almost 70% of the planet's fresh water and 90% of the world's ice. Antarctica is also considered to be a desert. Lots of rocks on Earth have a Martian origin. Scientists analyze the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places. It turned out that these rocks had arrived from the Red Planet. The largest sandcastle in the world is located in Denmark. 30 sand sculptors who created it used more than 5,000 tons of sand. To make it more durable, they added 10% of clay, together with a layer of glue. They built it to stand tall against long and stormy winters. Some photons that don't get absorbed are re-emitted, and their wavelength determines the color we see. When you expose a material to sunlight or photons of higher energy, it can damage its chromophores, which is why they won't be able to emit photons at certain wavelengths. Red materials fade in sunlight the most. Their chromophores emit red light in a way they mop up photons of the rest of the wavelengths. From 60 to 100 tons of space dust drift down to our planet's surface every day. These tiny cosmic particles are mostly released by comets, which are usually made of dust and ice. When the sun turns this ice into vapor, the remaining dust travels down to Earth. There are two sides to every story. Just like to a regular cotton pad, two different textures to be more precise. One is smooth, and you're supposed to use it for more sensitive areas of your face, for example, the eyes. The rougher side can help you remove makeup and clean your face in less sensitive areas, like the forehead. If you like having greenery in your home, you've probably noticed the flower pots have holes at the bottom. These holes are the reason your green friends live a happy life. They're extremely important for water drainage. Thanks to these holes, you'll avoid stagnant water buildup that can eventually ruin your plant. Also, thanks to those holes, roots can grow and expand beyond the limits of your pot. Have you noticed aviator sunglasses mostly have green lenses? It has something to do with their origin. First, they showed up in the 1930s. Before that, pilots had goggles to protect their eyes while they were in the air. High altitudes with glaring sun and sub-zero temperatures were a real test for their eyes. The goggles helped them with those issues, but there was another one. Since the temperature differences between the air outside and within the goggles were big, the lenses would fog up and obscure the pilot's view. So, the company Bausch & Lohm came up with teardrop lenses surrounded by a light metal frame. 
These lenses were dark green because this tint cuts out blue light, which is also a problem for pilots when they're flying above the cloud line. Plus, green lenses also reduce glare and improve contrast and sharpness. Holes in the side of your Converse sneakers? Hmm… Are those really necessary? Well, they allow air to enter your shoe so your feet can stay cool. You can also use them to style up your shoes and tie them in different ways too. There are two reasons plastic bottles have grooves. First, if you're drinking cold water and it's hot outside, you'll see there's a lot of condensation on your bottle. Or maybe if you're playing some sport or working out. Your hands are sweaty and if a bottle had a smooth surface, it would be more difficult to grip it. So the ridges are there to improve your hand grip. The second reason is that because of these ridges, manufacturers can use thinner plastic. That means they need less material in overall production. And that plastic is still firm enough for the bottle to maintain its shape. Wooden coat hangers are not just there to look nice. Since they're made of cedar wood, they bring a nice scent to your closet. Plus, they repel bugs. They're also quite firm, so they come in handy for heavy clothes such as jackets. And it's hard to damage them. So they'll serve you longer. You may have noticed there's a colored square at the bottom of your toothpaste. These blocks mostly come in blue, red, green, and black. They are some sort of eye marks, since they help manufacturing machines at the assembly line recognize where and when to cut the toothpaste and seal the end of the tube. Some boots have loops at their top and back. Looks like a fashion statement, doesn't it? Or maybe it's something that manufacturers add for fun. But those loops actually have their purpose. With them, you can pull the shoe up when trying to wear it. Plus, you can easily hang them or use the loop for better support for the laces. Confession time! Remember those attachments your vacuum cleaner came with? Did you also put them somewhere aside and never use them again? They're actually pretty helpful when you're cleaning the house because you can use them for particular areas that are sometimes hard to reach with the regular attachment. We all know what the vegetable peeler is for, but besides peeling the skin of carrots or potatoes, you can use it for onions too. It may be faster than doing it with a knife, plus it will save you some onion tears. Some sweatshirts have something pretty specific in the neck area. A V-shaped stitch you can see in the middle of the collar. The ribbed insert, similar to the ribbing at the hem and the sleeves, would allow the owner to put the garment on more easily and it wouldn't even lose shape. The V insert would stretch so a person wearing the sweatshirt could get their head through the neck. Its purpose was also to absorb sweat. In its early versions, sweatshirts had both the back and the front of the collars. Through time, they lost the back one, and this V insert became something decorative since manufacturers started to stitch a V at the collar without using the ribbed material they had added before. Brightly colored squares or circles you see on food packages aren't an indication of vitamins, minerals, or certain flavors that food contains. And nope, it's not some secret code consumers are supposed to crack. It's actually for printing engineers. They're called process control patches or printer's color blocks. During the process of printing the food packaging, manufacturers use those colored blocks to check if the printing ink is correct. They compare the color of blocks they print to make sure the brand they print for has a consistent and recognizable quality all over the world. The majority of printers only use four colors, yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. Some printers have additional colors, such as green, orange, and violet. That's why you sometimes see multiple circles on certain packages. They test each ink color. Margins in notebooks. They're not there as some sort of a guide for taking notes and writing. Someone came up with a potential solution that was supposed to protect the written work from, well, rats. They used to be pretty common residents in people's homes. They are known for their diet, including basically anything, like paper, for example. So, people started adding wide margins as an appetizer that was supposed to keep rats full. This way, they wouldn't want to get to the main dish, the written pages. Suits have a buttonhole close to the top of the lapel. Manufacturers sew it shut so you can't open it without ruining your suit. And when you compare it to the other lapel, 
you see that one is completely smooth, without any clues. You won't find such an unpartnered buttonhole on a suit jacket only. Camp shirts, pea coats, and some other clothing pieces have them too. And they have to do with the history of lapels. The earliest ones showed up at the beginning of the 19th century. Before this, men mostly wear frocks with high collars. They would button them all the way up to the top. During hot days, they would relax the button stance, turn down the collars, and leave the top button undone. It was a relief from the swelter, plus their folded over laps would be symmetrical at the chest, and today, we recognize that as a lapel. People stopped using that buttonhole after they came up with a lapel, unless it was for some formal occasion. Like, for example, when you wanted to put a flower in there. That's why suit makers left it as a fashion feature. Tea bags. It's pretty easy to guess what they're for, but they come in handy if you have smelly feet after a long day in your shoes. Just pop tea bags, unused of course, in your shoes during the night. By the time you wake up, tea bags are going to effectively absorb all the unwanted odors. Binder clips can also have a helpful purpose besides their main one. You can clip your money to keep it together. Same is true for paper clips. If your favorite bracelet broke and you're looking for a way to hold it on, a paper clip might help. Just hook one through each end of the bracelet, twist it tightly, and your bracelet is good to go. There are things about your body you know for sure, or don't you? Can you guess what exactly is a myth or fact? One point is for each correct answer. Let me know your score. Brown eggs are more nutritious than white eggs. Myth or fact? Myth. There is no study saying brown eggs are healthier than white eggs. The only difference is the color of the eggshell. The color of the eggshell doesn't affect its nutrition or quality. That is related to the type of chicken. Chickens with white earlobes tend to have white eggs. Have you heard that a large amount of the dust in your home is actually decanted skin? Not cool, I know. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? This is a myth. You're not just mopping your skin flakes from the floor. Many other components make the house dust. Fibers, hair, building materials, mold, pollen, insect body parts, and ash are some of them, according to the study made in Canadian houses. This makes sense because a house nearby a busy highway or in a renovation area has more dust than a house in the middle of a forest. Skin is our largest organ. Is this a fact or myth? It's a fact. You might think for a second that the intestine can be quite large when you unfold it, but nope. Skin wins the contest. An adult carries around 8 pounds and 22 square feet of skin. Can't think of us without a skin. It's not just there to cover our bodies. It has an essential role in protecting us too. You can't breathe and swallow at the same time. Myth or fact? It's a fact. Maybe you already knew the correct answer but you tried it anyway after reading this, so see it for yourself. So in your throat, there are two passageways important for your survival. I'm putting aside the fancy medical names and I'll refer to those two as airway and food pipe. They prevent breathing and swallowing simultaneously. Otherwise, food would enter the airway and cause severe complications. This doesn't always go as planned. That's why sometimes you end up coughing and preventing the piece of food from reaching the lungs. As well as having unique fingerprints, humans also have unique tongue prints. Is this a myth or fact? Fact! The human tongue is magnificent enough in its features that make us taste the food. It's also unique in its texture. People use biometric systems like fingerprints, voice scans, and iris scans for authentication. They are important to the identification and verification phases. Tongue print is unique, so it's very hard to copy it. It can be used as a biometric system tool too. What if people started using this system in their daily lives for safety reasons? Imagine locking a safe or your phone with a tongue print. An adult spends three hours in the bathroom every week. Do you think this is a fact or a myth? It's a fact. A poll by scientists reveals that an average adult spends 3 hours and 9 minutes on the toilet every week. This is more than the time they spent exercising. Take your sweet time, no need to rush. You swallow 8 spiders a year while sleeping, myth or fact? Don't believe it, 
Lucky for us, and for the spiders of course, this is not true. Fear no more and have a good night's sleep. Most spiders don't deliberately come near humans. Plus, vibrations coming from a sleeping person might be uncanny for them. Or maybe the spider just lives in the habitat. It thinks that you are flatmates sharing a room. As long as there is actual evidence, I call this a myth. Your thigh bone can resist thousands of pounds of force. Do you think this is a myth or a fact? Yes, this is a fact. People generally refer to it as tight bone, but its actual name is femur bone. This bone is located on the upper part of your leg. Experts say that this bone is hard to break. It's one of the two strongest bones in our anatomy. The first one is the temporal bone of the skull. If you wondered about the first one. Anyway, a tight bone can support 30 times more of your body weight. Maybe it's because the femur bone is the longest and largest bone in the human body. Do you believe that shaving your hair makes it grow back thicker? Fact or myth? Watch how I debunk that myth. Experts say shaving doesn't affect the thickness of the hair. The hair's head didn't remove, so the root is still there. You only shave the upper part. After a shave, the hair grows bluntly because it's been cut. That's why you may feel it's getting thicker. It's safe to eat food that's been on the floor for 5 seconds or less. Is this a fact or a myth? Sorry for blocking the best way you justify eating something that fell on the floor. There's no such thing as the 5 second rule. Researchers found that a substantial amount of bacteria transferred to the food within 5 seconds. The moisture of the food directly affects contamination. Imagine you drop a slice of watermelon and chips on the floor. I don't know why you're eating both together or how you end up dropping them both. But let's continue with this example anyway. The watermelon will have more contamination than chips because watermelon has more moisture in it. The surface of the watermelon is more open to transferring bacteria. Blondes and redheads may soon disappear. Myth or fact? An easy one, right? This is a myth. Red or blonde colored hairs are connected to recessive genes. They can be carried from one generation to another without creating the hair color of the carrier. If both parents have the correct recessive genes, the chances are high that the next generation will have blonde or red hair. These genes are rare, but populations still have those genes carried out so they won't get lost forever. For that to happen, literally everyone on the planet who carries that gene must disappear. So, the chances are low. Drinking coffee dehydrates you. Is it a fact or myth? Myth! You can enjoy your morning coffee. Okay, you may visit the bathroom more frequently after drinking coffee, but it doesn't mean you're losing more water. There are numerous studies made about the effects of caffeine. Some of these studies reveal that drinking a reasonable amount of coffee a day doesn't increase the risk of dehydration. Eating yogurt helps your digestion. Do you think this is a fact or just another myth? A fact, but with the right choice of yogurt. Yogurt is food containing probiotics. They are the good bacteria that make everything flow smoothly in your gut. Eating yogurt alone may not be enough to have a healthy digestive system. It supports the digestive system positively. Keep in mind though, not all yogurts are equal. Some of them have sugar in them or they come with toppings like candy or cookies. Go for the classic ones. Your hair will grow faster if you have it cut more often. Fact or myth? We were always told not to cry too much over the hair we lost because it would grow back faster. Unfortunately, the hair growth rate doesn't depend on how often you get a haircut. The average hair growth rate is 0.01 inches per day. Plus, many factors affect it, age, hormones, and even the time of year. Knowing this new fact may make some people postpone their hairdresser appointments. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Now, there are things about nature that you know for sure. Or don't you? Let's check how much you know about the incredible world we live in. How many of the 14 points will you guess? Let us know! The Great Pyramid of Giza was built when mammoths still roamed the Earth. Myth or fact? It's actually a fact. 
the most famous pyramid in the world had been constructed about 500 years before woolly mammoths went extinct, approximately 4,000 years ago. Their last known habitat was the cold and deserted Wrangell Island in the Arctic Sea, which might not have been as cold then as it is today. There are more trees on Earth than stars in the Milky Way. Is it myth or fact? It's a fact. Scientists used to believe there were about 4 billion trees on our planet. But more recent studies have shown that there are over 3 trillion of them, making it 420 trees per person. As for the stars in our galaxy, there are only about 100 billion, which is 30 times fewer than the trees on Earth alone. The trees you see are all individual ones, myth or fact. This is false. In fact, 90% of the trees on Earth are interconnected by mycelium filaments. They send warning signals when in danger and exchange nutrients through them. It's kind of like the underground internet. Also, there are organisms like Pando, for example, which is the largest single living being on the planet. It looks like a dense forest of quaking aspens. In fact, it's basically a single giant tree, with its roots being interconnected underground. We drink the same water dinosaurs used to drink hundreds of millions of years ago. Myth or fact? Actually, it is. Only a small portion of the water on our planet has evaporated for good. The rest of it is constantly renewed. So, mammoths, dinosaurs, and whatever came before them billions of years ago drank and swam in the same water we see today. Not to mention what else they did in the water. Unfortunately, the water doesn't keep information about those ancient creatures for us to find out more about them. Lightning never strikes the same place twice. Are you willing to bet on that? Myth or fact? If you aren't, good for you. Lightning may strike the very same spot as many times as it wants. It might seem random, but the electrical discharge from the sky is pulled toward the tallest objects in the thunderstorm area. Also, the material this object is made of matters too. It's by no chance that lightning rods on buildings are mostly made of copper and aluminum alloys. These metals are some of the most conductive materials, so they pull lightning very efficiently. All deserts are hot. Now, this one's easy, right? Myth or fact? If you guess it's a myth, then right you are. Deserts are qualified not for their temperature, but for the presence or absence of growth and life in them. The most well-known desert is the Sahara, of course, and it is indeed very hot. The actual largest desert in the world is Antarctica, which is almost twice the size of the Sahara Desert. And you wouldn't call it even lukewarm. It's a polar desert, and there are several others on our planet. For example, Greenland. There's enough gold underground to cover the entire planet in a thick layer. Would you believe that? Well, you should, because it's true. Since 1950, humanity has mined nearly 200,000 tons of gold. If we made a cube out of all this metal, it would be 70 feet high and wide. Recent data from scientists confirm that there are huge reserves of gold in the Earth's core. The metal is enough to cover the whole planet, and people might have gold up to their knees. The problem is, we just can't mine it from there. Hey, I don't mine if you don't. The Moon and Mars are better mapped than the Earth's oceans. Now, this can't be true, can it? Actually, it can. We have a detailed map of the Moon and Mars, although we're still discovering surprises on their surfaces granted. Still, over 80% of the Earth's oceans are unmapped and unexplored. We can't study the oceans properly because of pressure, cold, and lack of light underneath billions of tons of water. 
The lava is always red. What other color can it be, right? Myth or fact? Myth. Usually lava is really red or orange because it's basically molten rock from the deep bowels of our planet. But there's one volcano in Indonesia whose lava is blue and luminescent. Only at night, though. During the day, it looks normal. No mystery about it, just tons of sulfuric gas. This volcano also has the largest acidic crater lake in the world. The water there is so turquoise, you want to jump in immediately. But you probably guessed you should never do that. The fire on that volcano is also blue, the largest blue fire in the world, rising up to 16 feet high. Ever seen a gas stove burning? Here, the principle is basically the same. You can see a rainbow at night, too. Is it myth or a fact? It's true. And there's even a name for this phenomenon, a moonbow. Also called a lunar rainbow, this event occurs extremely rarely. It's similar to a regular rainbow, except when it appears on a clear moony night after a rain shower. There's a thing called a fire rainbow, myth or fact. You bet! It's a beautiful phenomenon when the clouds in the sky are painted all the colors of the rainbow, looking like a fiery, multicolored cascade. It only occurs when the conditions are right, and those are very specific. It's close to the equator, the weather is clear, there are feather-like clouds in the sky, the sun is higher than 58 degrees above the horizon. Such clouds are made of ice crystals. When the sun's rays hit them, the particles refract the light and create a rainbow. Wow! There are rainbow trees. Myth or fact? If I made you doubt this, I'm glad, because this one is not Photoshop. This is the rainbow eucalyptus, and their bark may literally have all the rainbow colors. These eucalyptuses shed their bark at different times each year. Every time the old section goes off, the tree first reveals bright green bark that was hiding underneath. And then it may turn any color. There's a whole set of hues. Orange, maroon, blue, even purple. Stones can move on their own. Myth or fact? Well, you'd be right to believe me. There's a desert plain in California where rocks move around of their own will. Once this plain used to be the bottom of a lake, but then it dried out and became an arid wasteland. Sometimes, rains fall here, flooding the entire valley. When night comes, the temperature drops and the water is covered with a thin layer of ice. When it gets warmer again, the ice breaks into segments and the wind pushes them around the place. Some of these ice shards take small rocks with them. When the ice melts for good and the water evaporates, the only thing that remains are trails left by the rocks, as if they'd moved on their own. Mud puddles can move around. Myth or fact? In fact, a single mud puddle in the world also travels as it wants, and nobody still knows why. It moves at a pace of about 20 feet per year, and it seems to have started its journey near the San Andreas Fault in California. People have tried to stop its march, but couldn't. So far, this creeping natural disaster isn't showing any signs of stopping on its own, either. So, there's your pesky, problematic puddle to ponder. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Now, if you don't want to sneeze, press the skin on the bridge of your nose with your fingers. When you do it, your brain receives an alarm signal. Very quickly, it puts the brakes on all other processes, including the sneezing reflex. By the way, the longest sneezing fit was recorded in 1981. Sorry. It lasted for 976 days. 
During this time, a woman from the UK sneezed more than a million times. The part of your brain that's responsible for vision is in the back of your head. Interestingly, the right side of your brain controls the vision on the left side and vice versa. If you're in some loud place, for example, in a club or at a concert, close your ears to better hear your friends. Push the tragus, the pointed skin-covered cartilage in front of the ear canal, into your ear. Then turn this ear toward your friend. If you feel anxious, press your fingers into a fist with your thumb sticking out and slowly blow on this finger. If you can't stop hiccups, put an ice cube on your tongue. Or you can close your ears with your palms and drink a glass of water through a straw in one breath. Pulling the tip of your tongue or raising your arms toward the ceiling can also be helpful. On average, when a person snores, the sound doesn't get louder than 60 decibels. That's as loud as a regular conversation. But sometimes, the noise levels can reach 80 decibels. That's as loud as a working food blender. If you want to wake up faster, hold your breath for some time. When you do it, your heart starts beating more rapidly, and your body turns on the active mode. But don't overdo it. If you wake up too abruptly, you'll put unnecessary stress on your heart. If you feel moody, hold a pencil between your teeth. The muscles involved in smiling will get down to work. This will send special impulses to your brain, and it'll start producing endorphins. In no time, your smile will become much more sincere. Right-handed people tend to chew most of their food on the right side of their mouths, and those who are left-handed use their left side more. The smell of rosemary can help you activate your super memory. Whenever you need to learn something by heart, do it while lying down in bed with a sprig of rosemary nearby. It'll help you memorize the info more effectively and faster. If your leg has fallen asleep, shake your head. In about a minute, you'll realize that your muscles have relaxed and the pins and needles sensation has passed. The muscles that help your eyes focus make around 100,000 movements a day. If you want to make your leg muscles move as much, you'll need to walk 50 miles. Deja vu might actually be something like a brain processing lag. There's a theory claiming it might happen when your brain is moving information from one part to another. If there's even the tiniest delay in that process, your brain will get the same information twice. In this case, it'll process it as an event that happened before. Out of all those people who can move their ears, only 30% can move just one ear. Your mouth burns when you're snacking on pineapple because while you're eating this fruit, it's eating you back. Pineapple is the only known food that contains bromelain. That's an enzyme that breaks down proteins. Luckily, your stomach acid knows how to deal with the offending enzyme. If you have a tickle in your throat, scratch your ear. This stimulates a nerve, which results in a muscle spasm in your throat. And in no time, the tickle is gone. Surprisingly, you burn more calories when you're sleeping than when you're watching TV. Ask your friend to sit down on a chair and put your index finger on their forehead. Then tell them to stand up without using their hands. They won't be able to do it. Just like salamanders regrow their tails, humans might be able to regenerate cartilage. That's rubber-like stuff surrounding your joints. Scientists have recently discovered that cartilage could repair itself. This process is likely to be the most effective at the ankle not that effective in the knee, and the least effective in the hip. If you're lying in bed and suddenly experience vertigo, place one of your feet on the floor. Your brain will receive the information that you're standing on something firm, and the unpleasant sensation will pass. Only 30% of people can flare their nostrils. If someone is tapping you on the back while you're hugging, they're non-verbally asking you to let go. People with a single palmar crease have just one line running across their palm. Such people are very rare, just 1.5% of the world's population. Most people have two palmar creases. Men are more likely to have a single palmar crease than women. In most cases, it runs in families. Your taste buds have a very short life cycle. 
they live for no longer than 10 to 14 days. Your lips are hundreds of times more sensitive than your fingertips. Your skin wrinkles when you stay in the water for too long, but it doesn't happen because it absorbs water. In reality, wrinkled fingers and toes provide you with a better grip. Studies have proved that sneezing is your nose's way to reset. A sneeze reboots the cells that line the insides of your nose. They're called cilia. If a person has anosmia, which is also called smell blindness, they don't distinguish and detect smells. The amount of food you consume in your lifetime will weigh as much as 8 Asian elephants. No wonder that people spend almost 4 years of their life eating. Your skin analyzes 1 million bits of data per second. Your ears and nose process 100,000 bits each. And your tongue is the least productive. It analyzes just 1,000 bits. Multitasking is kind of impossible. What we consider multitasking is actually just our brain switching between different tasks really fast. Unfortunately, in this case, people tend to make mistakes much more often. Plus, you may need twice as much time to do a task as usual. On the other hand, when you're engaged in some physical activity you've done many times before, you can perform a mental task too. That's why you can easily jog or take a shower and think about problems at work. If you see someone constantly fixing their sleeves, they likely feel very nervous, and fiddling with something is a self-soothing technique. You can check how unique you are by chewing on a sprig of cilantro. For some people, this herb may taste similar to soap because the plant contains a chemical used in soap making. But only 4 to 14% of the world's population have special genes that can detect it. Are you one of them? A grown-up person uses around 200 muscles to make just one step. Your eyes never stop moving while taking in visual information. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see the whole picture. These movements go unnoticed because your brain is a great video editor. It stabilizes the images and connects tons of fragments into one smooth video. Your stomach gets a totally new lining every 3 to 4 days. That's how your body prevents the stomach from digesting itself. When a person lies, the temperature around their nose and in the inner corners of their eyes rises. This phenomenon is known as the Pinocchio effect. Hmm. The liver is the only human organ that can regenerate completely. Even if it's a mere 25% of the original liver weight, the organ can get back to its full size. Synesthesia is an unusual and rare ability. People who have it can taste music or hear colors. But only one in every 2,000 people has it. These days, our finger and toenails grow faster than they did half a century ago. It might be because people eat more proteins today. You start feeling thirsty once your water loss reaches 1% of your body weight. More than 5% and you may even faint. Water loss that exceeds 10% of the body weight, um, we'll just say that it doesn't end well. Your brain can generate more than 48 thoughts in under a minute. It's almost 3,000 thoughts per hour and more than 70,000 per day. Each person has around 150,000 hairs on their head. On average, every strand grows about a half an inch per month. If you combine the growth from each hair, it would measure the distance of 10 miles per year. If you get a leg cramp, pull your big toe toward yourself. This will stretch your muscles and reduce the spasm. People have bacteria that can produce electricity living in their intestines. These bacteria give off electrons, which creates tiny electrical currents. This might be the bacteria's way to generate energy. Maybe turn on some lights. Hey, it's dark in there. By the end of their life, the average person can recall up to 150 trillion pieces of information. If you brush your teeth before eating or drinking something, you might end up damaging your taste buds. That's because most kinds of toothpaste contain two chemicals, sodium lauryl ether sulfate and sodium lauryl sulfate. 
that decrease your ability to taste sweet things and increase your ability to taste bitter food. The DEC2 gene mutation allows people to have just a few hours of sleep a night and still feel great. They don't get tired and never sleep in. Boy, where do I get one of those? On average, these people wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. Only up to 5% of the world's population has this feature. Only humans can produce emotional tears. Other living beings cry to lubricate their eyes. Women have more taste buds on their tongues than men do. It might be one of the reasons why 35% of ladies are super tasters, people who feel flavors more strongly than others, and only 15% of guys can boast the same ability. It's hard for people to recognize someone they know if, in a photo, this person doesn't have eyebrows. This proves that eyebrows are more important for face recognition than eyes. When clasping their hands, 50% of people put their right thumb above the left one. 49% of people position their left thumb over the right. And only 1% of people place their thumbs next to each other. Your brain contains more than 86 billion nerve cells, which are joined with one another by 100 trillion connections. That's way more than the number of stars in our home Milky Way galaxy. And if you decided to count all those numerous nerve cells, it would take you up to 3,000 years. A tremendous waste of time. Your brain's memory capacity equals 4 terabytes on a hard drive. That's more than 8 million photos. You're likely to keep in memory up to 10,000 different faces. This number is different from person to person, but the average is 5,000. It doesn't mean you can put a name to each face. It's only about recognizing the features. If you walked in the same direction for 12 hours a day, you would need around 800 days to travel around the globe. The Bajau is a group of nomadic people that live in the waters surrounding the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia. Thanks to a rare DNA mutation, they can stay underwater for up to 13 minutes. They also dive to a depth of 200 feet. Blue cheese can affect your dreams, making them more vivid. Your ears might pop or even hurt when you were on an airplane. You can solve this problem by simply chewing some gum. This opens up the eustachian tube, a small passage that connects your throat and your middle ear. Opening this passage up helps equalize the pressure in your ears and puts an end to the popping. You can also yawn to open up the eustachian tube. Your dreams are a complex mix of your imagination, memories, and knowledge. The average person has from 4 to 7 dreams every night, but not all people remember them. Even if fingerprints get badly damaged, they grow back with their original pattern. If you have to deal with complaining customers, put a mirror behind your back. When an angry person approaches you, they'll see themselves in the mirror. This will prevent them from acting rudely. No one likes seeing themselves this way. Your feet are likely to become bigger with time. When people grow older, ligaments and tendons in their feet weaken. This makes the arches flatter, and feet become wider and longer. Only 3% of people in the world have lines that form the letters X on both their palms. In many cultures, this is believed to be a sign of a strong personality. The human brain is 73% water, just like your heart. That's why if your brain loses even 2% of liquid, you start feeling exhausted. This also makes your memory worse, shortens your attention span, and puts a dampener on your mood. In most people, their height is the same as their arm span. Check it out! A particular gene mutation results in super-dense bones that are almost impossible to break. They're several times tougher than the average person's bones. People with this mutation also have skin that is less prone to aging. You might have noticed little dots traveling in squiggly lines when you're looking at a bright light or blue sky. They're usually only visible for a second or two. Sometimes they look like tiny worms. Well, those are your white blood cells moving through the capillaries in front of the retina, the light-sensitive tissue at the back of your eyes. 
Most people don't even notice the dots unless you ask them to pay attention. If someone is listening to you with their eyebrows raised, they're likely genuinely interested in your story. If you decided to uncoil the human DNA, the whole thing would stretch for 10 billion miles. That's 40,000 times the distance between Earth and the Moon. Human teeth are almost as strong as those of a shark. The enamel of your teeth, that's the outer layer, is the hardest substance in your entire body. Your nostrils don't work with the same efficiency all the time. When you breathe, one nostril does most of the work. They switch every couple of hours. Your right ear is more responsive to speech, and your left ear is better at perceiving music. Researchers think that's because it's your left hemisphere that processes speech, while the right one deals with music and other creative functions. Your lips look red because of a great number of tiny blood capillaries right below the skin. While enjoying your favorite cold food or beverage, you might suddenly get a painful brain freeze. This happens because the nerves at the roof of your mouth get frozen. They send signals to your brain asking it to please stop eating such cold stuff. But you can overcome this unpleasant sensation by pressing your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Do it as hard as you can. The pain will soon disappear. Your lips don't sweat because there are no sweat glands there. They also have no glands producing a special protective film that keeps your skin hydrated. That's why your lips are so vulnerable to the sun, wind, and cold. They also dry out faster than other body parts. You wouldn't be able to taste food if your body didn't produce saliva. Your taste buds have special receptors that recognize different flavors. But without some liquid, flavors won't bind to the molecules of these receptors. There are only a few cells in your body that will stay with you throughout your entire life. Those are the cells in the inner lens of your eye, the muscle cells of your heart, and the neurons of your cerebral cortex. That's a fancy word for the outer layers of your brain. Millennials are people who are now between 25 and 40 years old, and they tend to be more forgetful than older people. The main reason for this phenomenon is higher levels of stress these folks have. People with albinism have little to no melanin. That's the pigment that gives color to your hair, skin, and eyes. It's a rare condition. In the US, only 1 in 18,000 to 20,000 people is born with albinism. But there's also ocular albinism, and it's even rarer. Experts think only 1 in 50,000 people has ocular albinism. During just one day, the blood in your body travels over 12,000 miles. That's half as long as the distance around Earth. Almost 25% of your body's cholesterol is in your brain. This substance is crucial for your memory and learning abilities. But the blood-brain barrier doesn't allow your brain cells to get cholesterol from the blood. That's why your brain produces its own kind of cholesterol. Paradoxically, even though your teeth are a part of the skeletal system, they don't count as bones. It might be because they, sadly, can't regenerate. But if a bone is broken, it heals on its own by producing new bone cells. Your eyes can see something for a mere 13 milliseconds, and it'll be enough time for your brain to process the image. For comparison, the average blink lasts from 100 to 400 milliseconds. Bright sunlight makes 17 to 35% of people sneeze. This phenomenon is called the photic sneeze reflex. Your fingers are extremely sensitive. They can feel objects that are no bigger than the width of your hair. If your finger was the size of Earth, you'd still feel the difference between cars and houses. If there is a calorie chart in a restaurant, people tend to order less healthy and more high-calorie food. They compare the difference between, let's say, a burger and a large serving of Caesar salad and notice that it isn't that big. And since the burger seems to be more filling, that's what they order. But when people don't know that a big portion of salad contains almost as many calories as the burger, they pick a healthier option. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.
Mm. A weird white spot on a banana is a sure sign you probably want to throw them away, as these are the nests of spiders. I'm talking about the Brazilian wandering spider, as it has no GPS. And this guy is dangerous, also known as the world's most venomous spider. One bite, and your nervous system is instantly blocked. As a nasty bonus, you get nausea and blurred vision. Don't worry, they're most likely to be found in South America. But since they like to hide, they can sneak into the banana box and travel wherever the bananas travel. They like to travel in their sack, and there is evidence of a mama spider traveling together with her baby spiders. Oh, goody. Ever eaten canned food? Chances are, you've hoovered up some maggots, too. Those critters can be found in all types of food. Canned tomatoes? Sure thing. Canned mushrooms? Absolutely. Maggots are crazy about those. They love it so much that 20 maggots are good to go for 3.5 ounces of drained mushrooms. Sorry, pal. There's nothing we can do. Just accept it. Some creepy things in your food may actually be approved by the FDA. As weird as it may sound, the FDA is okay with 30 or more insect parts per chocolate bar. Want to know more? Okay, how about rodent hair in your peanut butter? Mmm, yummy! Despite the fact that peanut butter is one of the best controlled by FDA products out there, they don't see anything bad in a couple of rodent hairs per jar. Now, let's check your intuition. Question 1. How much mold is acceptable in apple butter, according to the FDA? Mm, Not that much, actually. 12% mold is acceptable. Question 2. How much mold is okay for cherry jam? Eh, Things are getting stinkier, as 30% mold is okay for cherry jam. The last one? What about blackcurrant jam? Ready? 75% moldy blackcurrant jam is FDA approved. I don't think I'm going to eat peanut butter with blackcurrant jam ever again. Broccoli is both good for health and risky at the same time. It's not that you shouldn't touch broccoli, but it's a rather friendly reminder to check your veggies. What if there might be a dangerous insect lurking inside your broccoli? Let's say, the black widow spider. Their bite is not as bad as the Brazilian wandering spider's bite, but it's still not good. It's a true story. A guy from Ohio did find such a spider in broccoli. Luckily, this story has a happy ending. The person who found it called the local animal sanctuary, and the Ohio Another Chance Sanctuary adopted the spider and gave it a really cute name. (laughs) Broccoli. Hey, wait a minute. We're adopting spiders now? Ho ho ho! Christmas is soon, and you up for a live Christmas tree. Before dragging that tree right to your place, you better inspect it thoroughly. See that walnut-sized, pinecone-shaped object hanging on your tree? Bad news! This is someone's dormitory. It's an egg sack holding hundreds of little mantises waiting to hatch in your home and celebrate the holidays together. So, unless you want to share your bed with them, make sure all the surprises are under the Christmas tree, not on it. Right, you don't want to risk and opt for the fake Christmas tree. Good choice! Thing is, fake trees are three times less likely to catch fire than live ones. But it doesn't mean it's totally safe. You have to be careful either way. Use appropriate lighting and never place the fake tree too close to the heat source. Flame-resistant models are the best. Alright, nearsighted people, beware! If you ever see something that looks either like an Oreo cookie or an ancient coin with a quaint design, you better put on your glasses before touching it. You know, this might be a terrifying spider. What, again? Yeah. I'm talking about the Chinese hourglass spider. And I honestly have no idea why they call it the hourglass spider, and not the cookie spider. These guys live in Southeast Asia, Mexico, and Guatemala. And it seems like it doesn't really care that much about cold, since it can even chill in some parts of the United States and Canada. These spiders are notorious for setting up traps. They build burrows, and once they detect motion, bam, they pounce. Also, those burrows help them keep unwanted visitors, such as wasps, at bay. Good news? We humans are way too large for them to drag us into their dungeons. And despite many viral posts, they're not poisonous to us. What time is it? 
Ah, it's time to debunk another myth. Now, some time ago, there was a viral TikTok video with strawberries soaked in salt water. The video looked pretty gross because of worm-like bugs crawling from the strawberry. But this one is sort of a myth that all the strawberries are swarming with larvae. First off, they all get checked and soaked before shipping. Moreover, there are fruit flies, which are quite different. Thing is, if the berries wait on the counter to be bought for too long, they start attracting fruit flies, which lay teeny tiny eggs, which then turn into larvae, which then turn into new fruit flies. The key point here is that these fruit flies are everywhere. Supermarkets, smaller stores, and even in your kitchen. And yeah, you're pretty much likely to eat them each time you munch on pretty much any berries. You say gross, I say natural protein. Eh, just kidding. Don't worry, plant larvae aren't dangerous for people. Also, you don't need to soak your berries in salt water. A thorough rinse will do. Now, it's best to avoid some fruits if they're underripe. Lychee is a good example here. Despite their innocent appearance, they can be pretty dangerous. If you eat them before they're ripe, you're likely to consume some toxins too. It's not as bad as you can imagine, but this toxin can significantly lower your blood sugar. For people with certain conditions, it may lead to unwanted consequences, including fever and even worse. So, nothing extraordinary here, just make sure your lychees are ripe. Now, you might think that black sooty spots on your apple are a true sign the fruit isn't edible, but it's not quite true. First off, those sooty spots are nothing but a cosmetic issue, even though it's a fungus. But don't worry, it's not dangerous or something. Option 1. Scrub those spots off and munch on your apple. Option 2. Peel the apple and munch on it. Option 3, where you throw the apple away, doesn't exist. Now, beware if the salmon you're about to buy has caviar. It might be a sign this fish is not going to be as yummy as you want. Salmon from the Pacific Ocean tend to lay eggs in freshwater, so they have to migrate when they do that. But once the salmon is in freshwater, all its systems kind of stop working and the fish stops eating. Such salmon is still edible, but the quality is way poorer than it could be. And what if you see a white capsule on your kale, which is supposedly a cocoon? Hey, no need to throw your dinner away. You can simply remove this aspiring butterfly, or fly, give that kale a fine rinse, and enjoy your salad. Oh, almost forgot? Be careful with pre-packaged salads. Even though the manufacturers claim they're safe to eat without washing, there is evidence of people getting health conditions because of unwashed pre-packaged salads. Those salads landed them with hefty medicine bills to get rid of the consequences. Imagine you suddenly notice a fly in your drink. Is it doing the backstroke? Will you finish the glass or pour another one? Well, it depends on the gender of the fly. If you've got a female fly in your drink, a couple of minutes later, the taste will get funky. If a male fly wants to take a bath in your glass, it won't ruin the drink. Thing is, the female flies have certain pheromones that are in charge of that funky smell. Even if you fish the fly out instantly, the drink can still lose its original taste, as even one nanogram of pheromone is enough. But since you probably won't be able to tell the fly's gender, you probably want to pour a new glass. Yeah, a fly in your stomach won't do anything bad to you, but it's sort of gross. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Burglaries are on the rise in your neighborhood, and you have concerns about whether your house might be vulnerable. You have no surveillance system, so tonight you're placing some foil over the front door handle before you go to bed. This will help identify if someone sneakily tries to enter while you sleep. You wake up the next morning, and it appears the foil is slightly ripped. Someone has been here, and they're sure to return. Another option is to put a mug on the doorknob. When the knob turns, the mug will fall, causing a noise to wake you up and hopefully deter the intruder. Your main concern is that a tradesman stopped by recently. He said that he was working next door and asked to use your toilet. You refused and felt bad at the time for being rude. 
but it was a very smart move. About 60% of burglaries in the USA are made by someone you know or have met before. That tradesman, while going to the bathroom, could have adjusted something in your house to make their return entry a little easier. They may have wanted to take a closer look at what security system is installed, check the structural integrity of your home, and found out what valuable loot you might have. Finally, today you're going on vacation. You need to prepare your house and make it as safe as possible. A full post box is the first thing a robber will look for in a target. Your neighbor will need to take your mail while you're away. A well-manicured property is a clear sign that you are always there. You've always kept your lawn mown and hedges trimmed, so you will need to arrange for someone to do this while you're away. If it was winter, any untouched snow around your house would also make it a target. Having a neighbor make pretend footprints that show recent activity will also provide a deterrent. There are many types of hedges that act as a great first defense. Luckily, you have sharp-leaved shrubs along your fences. If someone jumps into your property and lands on a sharp or spiky bush, they will immediately cry out in discomfort. This will alert your neighbors of an intruder. And the foliage will also catch fragments of clothing that could be used as evidence later. In preparation for your trip the week before, you opened and closed your curtains at random times throughout the day. You made sure there were no clear patterns, so it won't matter if they're left open while you're away, just in case someone was scouting your property. Burglars spend several days walking or driving through neighborhoods, identifying the behaviors of each house. One thing they don't really like is a neighborhood watch. Criminals do their research before they start scouting and will avoid these areas. Something for you to organize when you get back. Now, move all your expensive electronics away from the windows so there's nothing of value in clear view. Put them inside a cupboard or a concealed room. Don't worry about TVs. They're too large and take effort to move. The criminals are more interested in the smaller devices, like an iPad and gaming devices. Put your small expensive items, like jewelry, in boxes and hide them away in a secret location. Surprisingly, a kid's room is a good spot. Burglars have admitted to never going into them, as there's nothing of value in toys. Take photos of all the serial numbers on your electronic devices and create an inventory for insurance purposes. 95% of break-ins are done by force, so it's time to reinforce your windows and doors. You can make it even more difficult for the crooks. Remove all stools, chairs, and ladders in the backyard and put them into your garage. Otherwise, they will help provide easier access points to higher entrances, like the air conditioner box. This is one of their favorites. Without a way to reinforce it, it's easy to tear off and creates an entrance. Don't make it easier for them with a step up. Burglars can break down a weak door within one minute. Install a metal frame instead of wood for more support. The hinges and lock should have adequate strength to withstand being kicked long enough until they give up. With the lock as the remaining weak spot, this can easily be picked by an experienced thief. A simple protection lock that holds it in place will make sure it won't budge. The hinges on your garage door swing outwards, which makes it vulnerable and can be accessed by taking the pins out of the hinges. Replace them with tamper-proof pins so they can't be removed. And lastly, the garage overhead door is one of the first places a burglar looks to access. They don't have a lock that fully secures them. Attach a padlock on the latch connecting it to the track, holding it in place. Your garage door doesn't have this option, so drill a hole in the track just above one of the rollers and attach a padlock. Robbers are scared of dogs, the territorial and loyal guardians of the house. A survey found that most houses burgled didn't have dogs because thieves don't want to draw attention during a heist. 
Unfortunately, you don't own one. But just placing a dog bowl outside the front door will discourage them. The burglars have adapted their craft with technology. Four out of five criminals use social media, like Facebook, Twitter, and Google Maps to find their targets. Even sharing a photo with a house key in it is enough for a burglar to create their own key by zooming in and taking the exact measurements. Make sure your wireless network is secure and use a new, much stronger password while away. You're not only vulnerable to physical objects being stolen. Valuable data like passwords and access codes can be taken through your network. And there's also the threat of infecting devices through malicious malware. You can also remove the vision of your house completely from Google Maps. Type in your home address, find the street view of your residence, press the Options button, and select Report a Problem. You'll be taken to a screen with an image of your home, with the option to move a red square to cover your property. Request it to be blurred under the option My Home and enter your exact address. It will only take a couple of days to be processed. Don't leave the radio on while away. It won't help. Through the burglar's method of scouting houses, they take note of radio and TV sounds. When they return, they check if they're still on, which just makes it easier to confirm that no one's home. An alternative option to show active presence at home is by making your own audio, something that plays ambient noises randomly throughout the day, with footsteps, conversations, and a dog barking. Leaving your lights on is also not a good idea. Someone spying will notice your house easier, especially at night, and you'll be further robbed on your electricity bill. You're just about ready to leave on your vacation and need to take the trash out. If you have some large boxes, break them down so they can fit inside the bin. Hide any clues about what valuables you recently received. Last check, all the doors are locked and no windows are left open. Now you can finally enjoy your trip. But as you enjoy yourself in your picturesque location, leave any snaps on your phone while you're over there and post them online only when you return. If you do share your photos while you're away, it will have made all your preparations pointless. Every criminal in the area will know you're not home. But with 2.5 million houses burgled annually in the USA, a house without a modern security system is 300% more likely to be broken into. When you get back from your break, it will be a great idea to install one. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Now, I hate to break it to you, but there's no such thing as a baby carrot. The cute little carrots they sell at supermarkets are actually regular carrots that have been shaved down to this baby size. You would think strawberry-flavored gummy bears should be red or pink, right? Well, sorry to say, but they're green. Brown rice and white rice are the same product. The white variety starts off as the brown one, but then some parts of it are removed by milling, which gives the rice its white color. This allows it to be stored for longer, but at the same time reduces the rice's nutritional value. Now, on the topic of rice, it was used to build the Great Wall of China. The builders mixed sticky rice soup with lime and got rice mortar for construction. It was stronger and had better water resistance than regular lime mortar. Thanks to the rice soup, the Great Wall has been able to stand for centuries despite the elements. You found a long-forgotten chocolate bar somewhere deep in your desk. Yum! Nice surprise! But when you open it, you hesitate. There's some unpleasant-looking kind of dusty film on it. Don't worry, though, it's still safe to eat. It's just that the fat or cocoa butter used to make the chocolate has been separated from the rest of the bar because of the heat. As it cooled back down, it created this whitish film. The taste might be a little off, however, so it may be best to use it for cooking instead. And you'd have more self-control than I do. Avocados can't ripen while on the tree. 
If not picked, they will simply fall from the branch while still not ripe. When picked, though, they will become soft and flavorful just like we love them. This happens because of the burst of ethylene produced by the fruit itself after picking. It's inhibited while the avocado is still on the tree. Tomatoes bought at supermarkets often have a weak flavor. It has to do with how they're grown and stored afterwards. Tomatoes are gathered when not fully ripe yet, and they ripen in the transportation containers and on the store shelves. But if they're stored at temperatures below 40 degrees Fahrenheit while not fully ripe, they lose a lot of their flavor. So to keep them tasty, it's best to store tomatoes outside the fridge. Honey is probably the only food that can literally never go bad. If it's properly sealed with no air left in, it can go for millennia and still be edible. The oldest pot of honey ever found was 5,500 years old, next to the mummy of Winnie the Pooh. Nah, not really. While dark and milk chocolate raise no questions 